so here with us uh, dr devajini mukherjee who is delivering our expert uh, talk session number 14 on stress management ma'am heading uh, psychology in st thomas college bilal for last 31 years she also chairman of board of studies in psychology and dur university she is yoga enthusiast experimenting and incorporating yoga in the therapeutic method and trying to find the place for yoga and healing in the area of positive psychology she has published more than 20 research paper in reputed journal and presented paper in many conferences in india and abroad madam i uh, heartily welcome you and uh, you can start your expert talk now uh, thank you sir thank you so much and i thank uh, rumta college especially dr sanjay sakarwade for uh, giving me such a uh, to talk on the topic of stress and its management well it is not every day that i get a chance to address a technically uh, minded academicians especially who are i'm sure a bit stout as they are at the receiving end for the past few days instead of the uh, other end where they are the speakers or the teachers so uh, normally it is you uh, uh, who are who are sitting on the chair that we are sitting but for the past 5 days you are learning it must be enjoyable but anyway being at the receiving end it is definitely a little stressed out process also and i'm sure it will be an equally enjoyable session for me to uh, dealing in uh, interacting with you people well uh, am i audible very clear sir yes sir yes sir okay today we are here to talk about uh, stress management now who do we manage do we manage the stress or do we manage ourselves we have to uh, think on that point of view whom do we manage and both of them that is the stress as well as us we are manipulative variables we are the independent variables where the outcome or the dependent variable is the de stress or the happy state so uh, first let us talk about the uh, various types of stress that we face in a normal routine now i'll just put this in a uh, slide share ah uh, is it in slide share no it is not no just one minute okay so when we talk of stress generally there are five major types of stress that we uh, talk about and these are the first stress time stress as you can see in the screen now time stress is related with the stress that revolves and concerns with time and most frequently it is not time that is the best part of time stress it is lack of time that gives us the time stress and this lack of time to accomplish the work that has to be done the deadline the tough deadlines that we have in our daily uh, life and because of this deadline the clashes there between the two main domain of our daily life that is a work life and our home life a personal life and this time stress are the uh, deadlines that the duties that we have to do on time based our family members tell us to do this at by this time we have to finish our syllabus by this time we have to submit our assignments by this time so these are the deadlines related with time that gives us the time stress second is the anticipatory stress now for college professors or uh, you know academicians basically anticipatory stress is brought out when we think of an upcoming i'm sure you ask your uh, coordinator here dr sanjay he must have got uh, gone through this anticipatory stress uh, 10 days prior to, uh, to this start of this event 
and what will happen hope it happens all right today he must be a very relieved man when it will be over finally so this anticipatory stress can be an overall feeling of fear a trepidation that uh, repetition that uh, what will come what is coming next and this uh, it, there is an underlying layer of lack of confidence also for us when we are uh, going through this anticipatory stress and if you think from the other end that is the students from the point of view the students the uh, anticipatory stress uh, may be uh, huge maybe during the final year of the college when we are very scared of what kind of placement we will get uh, what kind of uh, job we get which city we relocate and this the question mark in our future about our future is what is anticipatory stress the third as you can see is situational stress now while the previous two that is the time stress and the anticipatory stress they are the prolonged kind of stress which goes on for few days few weeks uh, they are prolonged kind of stress but this situational stress is not prolonged it is it is a, a particular incident that gives us stress right it can be an emergency it can be a uh, argument with a colleague or a friend or a family member momentary that is situational stress and a common example can be when the results are out we have not done as good as we have expected we are expecting a promotion we don't get it situational argument with a friend so that is what is situational stress then we have encounter stress now encounter stress many people must be having especially the introvert when we talk of the people who don't like people who don't like to approach people who are a bit shy of asking people uh, you know just going walking up to unknown people and talking so encounter stress is uh, generally it is said that it is uh, more uh, common with the introverts as compared with the extroverts and uh, people who are not very social people who are not very uh, easily who can approach people now i'll just uh, uh, give you a very small example of uh, this kind of stress suppose you are walking on the road and it uh, on a, say 3 o'clock on a uh, very very hot afternoon it is 48 degrees there is nobody out on the road and you have to find the, the address of someone do we how many of us will go and actually a uh, knock on the door of a person and ask the person to come out and tell us the way many of us won't uh, try it we will be a bit reticent we will be a bit afraid to just call people call the bell and call people and ask them something when i'm sure at 3 o'clock afternoon people must be indoor they must be sleeping so but then there are people who are very casual about it who are very open about it they will not feel any stress in this thing so this type of stress is called the encounter stress and the last that i have written is incomplete task stress this is also called the zygarnik effect now what is zygarnik effect so this is basically you know the task that we have not done that gives us lot of heartaches that gives us lot of mental pressures and problems for example i'll just give it or give an example from the students point of view suppose the students have to write and they go for an examination and they have to write say five answers in a time of 3 hours so at the end of uh, say 2 hours or 2 and 1/2 hours he sees that he still has three answers to write somehow he manages to write four and 1/2 question very well and the fifth answer he could not uh, or the second half of the fifth answer a short note he could not attempt because of lack of time so when this uh, student comes out and he is asked how did your exam go what will he say if he says that it didn't go well i could not finish the last bit of the exam so but then see he has done four and half out of five he has done four and half questions very well it is only the uh one half of fifth question that he could not write but whenever asked he will be saying i did not do it as well as i should have done so here you can see the incompleted task that he could not do is giving him more stress 
than the completed task that he has done. So this is a, a thing that is very commonly felt by all of us. What we knew but could not do gives us a lot of pain, a lot of stress in our lives. We always keep on want to go back and do that work that we could not finish. We always want the time to go back. We always want the uh, clock to rewind, uh, to go back and complete that bit of task that we could not do. It is giving us a lot of stress. And this kind of stress is called the zygotic effect. So what I've talked to you about are the various <coughs> types of <coughs> stress that we generally feel in our daily routine. Now, uh, we will be doing a, a small exercise also. I would like all of you to sit with the pe uh, pen and uh, a paper also so that we uh, do this exercise. Now, before that, uh, coming back to the types of stress, now, some other reasons are always there in our personal lives that gives us stress. It can be a strained relationship with your partner. It can be a strained relationship with your colleague, right? You have to go back to that house again and again and you don't uh, somehow get along with the family members or you have to go back to the office again tomorrow and uh, you don't get along with your um, colleagues. So this gives you a daily stress. Definitely, it ha you can't help it. This is something you cannot change until, of course, you change your family, which is not possible, or you change your job, which again may not be that easy. Then there are stress that is created by the perceptual differences. Now, perceptual differences are just differences of opinion, but then we are all very headstrong people. We are all very opinionated people. We are all uh, people who think that what I think is the best, if we are like that, that definitely the perceptual differences will lead to a lot of stress and a lot of pressures when we have to adjust and we're not able to adjust. Then one point that I have written here is gender bias. Now, I don't know, I don't want to target the male community or the female community, but then generally when you uh, see that there may be gender bias, if the, if the it can be both ways. Again, I'm being very, very, uh, I would say democratic and not say that only females go through this uh, gender bias harassment. It is not like that. It can be the other way around also, but then definitely this is a point that we have to address. It can be there in any institutions, can be there for the males or for the females as well. And this creates a lot of stress in our lives. And uh, the last one that I've written is the money and expenses. Now, money and expenses is a daily, uh, uh, you know, uh, stress-related topic where our needs are more than what we are able to afford, and definitely it leads to a lot of takes a lot of uh, stress also. So now, this why have I given uh, this point here? that gadget, is it a boon or a bane? Definitely last two years without these gadgets, we would all have gone crazy. We would all have gone, um, I would say the academia, the whole uh, scene would have uh, gone bad if these gadgets were not there. But again, these gadgets are leading to a lot of stress in our personal lives also. It has its boons, it has its positivity. But there are some things that, uh, that is giving us a lot of uh, stress also. What are these? Let's see. One is sleep deprivation. Uh, deprivation. Definitely we are not sleeping as much. We should sleep the eight to 10 hours because we are on the gadgets till late at night. It can be preparing a lecture. It can be making notes. It can be uh, talking to people. And because of these, uh, the pandemic scene, people are not doing much of movement. So families are not meeting. So we are on the uh, Zoom call or in the Google Meet. We're trying to talk to people on videos. We are having group chats. So, so much of hyperactivity of the eyes are also leading to the sleep cells to uh, you know, uh, deactivate rather you can say, or the awake cells to get activated so that the sleep doesn't come that easily and deprivation is there. So another thing that is happening earlier, uh, maybe uh, uh, people who are working for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 
when the gadget scene was not there, uh, we used to sit across under a, a shade or a tree and just sit and gossip about our daily mundane things. What the family members do, what the children are doing, what the partner is doing, what the spouse is doing, what the neighbors are saying. We just used to exchange notes in such a manner that the daily mundane things which may have created stress at home, but when we speak it out with people, it is uh, it just gets shared. So many uh, you know inputs come in, and positivity also stems in. So the sharing has stopped definitely. People have become more uh, self-centric. People have become more uh, themselves into me. Sharing is less. They don't talk about their family matters. I remember when my children were small, if there was a competition in the school, or maybe a debate competition or a uh, fancy dress competition, I said, just, we were a staff room of 15 people. So I just to float the idea uh, that uh, this has to be done. And 20 ideas came back. Somebody offered, I have this dress. Somebody offered, I have this thing. So immediately that stress that I was feeling about the child going to school the next day with some preparation was taken care of. Now we are into isolated rooms. We are not uh, interacting the small mundane stuff of a family. Definitely the self-isolation, is le this leads uh, the stress to stay there. Earlier, by sharing the stress was made to go away. And this social, uh, low social interaction definitely is a cause of a lot of stress. Now, as I told you, that when you talk of uh, stress, Tell me an area where there is no stress. Where there is no stress. I will just quote some uh, small, uh, uh, I would say incidents, small uh, write-ups that come in the uh, WhatsApp or that come to in, in the internet, some incidences. And we will see how to relate them with uh, these topics that I'll be talking to you. Now, this is somewhere something that I read somewhere about the professor and the teacups. I'm sure most of you also must have heard this story. Now, the story goes, the, as the story goes, because I'm dealing with stresses everywhere, a small incidents, but see how the stress comes in. Uh, a group of alumni of a very highly, uh, you know, uh, ranked college, a group of alumni, they got together and they went to the house of a uh, visit, uh, house of an old university professor. And they visited this uh, whole old university professor. They all sat in the drawing room, chatting, gossiping, and people were complaining about their lives. They were, all of them were doing very well. Everybody was trying to be above the other. So the conversation somehow, which was a very light banter earlier that, okay, what do you do, your family? How do you do, where do you stay? Uh, where do you work? But as they came to the work area, immediately, in the, though they didn't ask it uh, aloud, but what is your position? Underlying questions like, what is your uh, salary? Or underlying question that, uh, how much area do you actually lead? Or how many people are under you? That kind of things started coming up. And again, what was happening? Somewhere before answering the question, a person felt a bit stressed whether I am doing better than the others or not better than the others. So competition in the, the way they were talking came in there, not in, directly in their, uh, in their language, but it was there in the air. Then the, um, you know, the seeds of stem, uh, stress, it was already soon. Then the professor went inside. There were 30, 20, 30 people there. He, uh, so he went to prepare some coffee. So when the coffee came, he did not have the similar types of cups uh, in his home. Uh, so he got assortments of cups, some were very good china, some were very good porcelain, some were very, very good uh, ceramics, some were plastic mugs, some were daily use cups. And he got 30 cups with a big, huge pot of coffee. And people, uh, they helped themselves to the coffee. They all sat with their cups and they started drinking. So when they were having their coffee, uh, the professor said, now just see here, all of you, if you have noticed that all the nice looking expensive cups were taken the first and leaving behind 
there were some extra ones also leaving behind the plain and the cheap cups which are not very expensive so what are we doing here we are just drinking coffee we should not have been bothered about the cup in which we are drinking coffee but then we get bothered and we take the best of the cup why because we want to be better than the other in every respect so here the underlying tones it was the job the quality of job the salary that a person is earning the seniority of that person without asking it started creating a competition and while drinking a cup of coffee also that competition shows it was not competition it was nothing but stress that others may outdo him other may get better than him somehow the human nature that uh, that we tend to breed stress we tend to cultivate stress we should have easily taken the uh, simplest and the cheapest of the cups but we don't that is why the my slide says that stress is everywhere it is everywhere it is up to us how we deal with it it is up to us whether we catch hold of the stress or we catch hold of the the opposite end where it may not be there the stress may not be there and and this is a beautiful example because uh, you know for everything we wear our clothes we want to look better than the others why why can't we wear something which is comfortable but no competition means nothing there is it can be healthy also definitely but then stress is there so the next is let's talk of the basic stressor of a life that is balancing work and life now uh, i would like all of you to sit with a paper and a pen are you ready yes yes okay so uh, when we talk of work and life you know they in uh, before uh, in the early 1900s uh, before the the uh, man and the woman their work was totally demarked huh? there was a, a defined demarcation between the two the men of the family went to work and the female of the family stayed at home and tended the home or took care of the home it was only during the industrial revolution uh, that the job opportunities really rose up there was a huge job opportunities that came and the man the uh, the time of the man's job from uh, uh, morning till evening st stretched to morning till night so he could not give time at home and friction started but then opportunities again kept on increasing and when the opportunities kept on increasing around the 1940s or so and especially in england in uh, uh, in england in uk this whole concept started Uh, where the female also started going out to work because there were opportunities and when that happened the discord in the family started now the the man was not actually made to take care of the home he was geared for generations to take care of the outside world female was take care of the home now she is also going to the outside world so who takes care of the home are they had both of them uh, taken care of the home the problem wouldn't have been there if now the generation has changed i'm talking about uh, uh, say how many years back you know in the 1940s almost 80 years back or so so that is when the concept of uh, work life balance started because lot of stress stemmed out to how to balance work and life now i will be uh, talking to you about some coping styles right i will talking to you about some coping styles how we balance work and life i am not here to do any policing that this is correct or that is wrong i am not here to correct you also because all the styles are equally good it is you who actually uh, take Is my internet working okay? I can. 
as a motivation yes yes ma'am is the is the voice coming okay because i could see unstable unstable uh, no no that, that may happen because of uh, bandwidth of internet but uh, no issue ma'am you can continue okay okay so uh, uh, so i will not do any policing what i will tell you are the various styles and you will judge yourself where you fit yourself okay and uh, it is up to us how because the way we cope with this balance is the way we de stress is the way we remove the stress in our life okay uh, so basically what i'm trying to say this whole exercise that we will do it boils down to self awareness right you will be knowing yourself better and uh, this is a tool that has been made by me only what i'll be using and uh, uh, now it is an unstandardized tool as of now we are going through the standardization process so i'm just using the part of the tool with you okay so this is our life imagine it is life it is like a game and these five balls that we are seeing are the five areas of our lives of our daily routine and they we are jug trying to juggle everything in the air. for example see how we are juggling the balls and if you drop the ball you will find now we have dropped the ball we are trying to juggle these five areas and after we drop the balls we see that it is only the first ball which has bounced back and second third fourth are cracked and the fifth ball is shattered let's see what these balls are the first one is your work second is your family third is your health fourth is your friends and fifth is you your personal space so what i'm trying to say in a daily life these are the areas that we are trying to juggle every day we are trying to fit in every day we are trying to cope up with the demands of these areas every day and when we are trying to juggle and we are not able to cope up or we are we just drop these balls it is only the work that lives that gets bounced back because we don't let it get affected we somehow manage to take care of it but our family is somehow affected our health is affected our friends relationship is affected but finally we can say it is me or my personal space which is totally and totally shattered and broken so our family health family uh, family uh, health and friends they are made of thick glass work is like a rubber ball bounces back and the personal space is like very thin glass ball so you can see this is what is our life is all about now we can start with the exercise uh, first concept that we talk about how we uh, cope up with our work stress and family stress is spill over so i will be giving you three uh, uh, there are five or six dimensions and in each dimension there will be three uh, items or three uh, statements if you agree to those statements you give yourself one mark so what you do you take the paper and you divide the paper in 1 2 3 4 5 five vertical uh, columns on top of the first column write spill over and i will be uh, on the three statements that i call out whichever statement you agree to give yourself one mark so either you give yourself three mark or you give yourself two one zero okay the first question is or the first statement is i think of office when i am at home if you do that give yourself one mark second i have a disturbed sleep when my mind is preoccupied with work 
I have a disturbed sleep when my mind is preoccupied with work. Agree? One mark. I am mentally and physically tired in office because of my household pressures. I'm mentally and physically tired in office because of my household pressures. Now, coming to the second column, you write compensatory. Compensatory. Okay, the statement that comes here, I do not get proper acceptance uh, of myself from my family. Therefore, I seek it at the office. I do not get proper acceptance uh, in my home. Therefore, I seek it at my office. Second, I like being my family members. Uh, in, uh, I like being my family members as the office atmosphere is not very happy or congenial. Third, I have a strange relationship uh, with my family members. Therefore, I work hard in office to be in good books in the family. The third column, alienation. Write alienation on top. The statement goes as such. If you agree, give one mark. If you don't agree, don't give any mark. I do only as much work as in office as uh, that is required. I only do, do as much work in office as much is required. Nothing extra. I'm not much involved in the activities of my children. They can take care of themselves. I'm not much involved. I like staying away from any controversy in the office. <clears throat> I like staying away from any controversy in the office. Next is instrumental. Write instrumental on top. I view my job as a means of buying comforts for my family. I view my job as a means for buying comforts for my family. The money I earn from my job is a means to ensure future of my children so that when I'm old, they take care of me. I earn to get a salary, to get a secure future for my children so that they can take care of me. I see my job as a means to develop contacts. I see my job as a means to develop contacts. The last point is integrative. On top, you can write integrative. One minute, please. Um. The next item comes under integrative. I do well in my profession uh, because my family members are there to provide positive inputs in family matters, in official matters, sorry. I do well in my profession because my family members are there to, and they give me positive input in official matters. I take help of my colleagues in dealing with my personal and family matters. I like to interact with my colleagues outside office hours also. I like to interact with my colleagues in uh, outside office hours also. Sorry, there's another column. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, there's another column. Segmentalist. Segmentalist. I like to be mentally free from home. Uh, 
one minute from home front when i am in office i like to be mentally free from home front when i am in office i don't like to carry any official work and problems home i don't like to entertain any official phone at home or personal calls at office so these are the six areas that these are the six areas that we are talking about in work life balance now we can do some exercise can we uh, get somebody who says that they the first column that is a spill over they have all the three uh, marks their full marks there do we have anyone like that can we make it a bit interactive the session participants participants you can unmute yourself hello yeah suresh you can ha ah, yes ma'am i have yeah. two two you marks have, okay you have two now uh, who was that mr suresh is that you yes ma'am okay yes, yes. okay so uh, out of 3 you have 2 so that means that uh, your personal and profe uh, professional life they affect each other and it yes. can be both positive and negative definitely spillover is there in everyone's life nobody can yes, say yes. there is no, no spillover but then yes, when the, when the spillover becomes high when it becomes too much then it can have uh you can say psychosomatic disorders in a person's life also it can lead to lot of stress it can lead to the lifestyle diseases right like cardiovascular yes, problem low immunity uh, it there yes. can be blood pressure problem diabetes problem so the basic thing that we have seen in spillover is that it leads to a lot of stress that again affects the physical health of a person and what we call the lifestyle diseases are a classic example of effect of spillover and uh, you know there has been studies that has been done where they have found that when the spillover happens it is always uh, the spillover from work to family is more than the spillover from family to work it is in fact around 75% spillover is from work to family and uh, the rest spillover is from family to work so the burden is more in the home when it comes from the work and that is the reason why uh, so much of lifestyle diseases are seen in this generation uh, uh, in these days okay so uh, all the participants are here just you have to take care of your own health if there is spillover we will be talking about the other coping styles also because these are uh, spillover is classic example of stress right so we are now nobody can remove the stress from your life whatever we do whatever we say we can sit here i'm a psychologist i'm a yoga practitioner i can talk big but then i cannot remove your stress or your stressor if your work is a stressor your colleague is a stressor your boss is a stressor the director of your institute is a stressor the students are a stressor or your spouse is a stressor we cannot remove it you have to learn how to save yourself okay okay so that is what is spillover the next point is second one is i think it is compensatory why is it okay the second is compensatory now can i have someone say that he has more uh, marks in compensatory yes can we have people someone discuss the compensatory can we be a bit more uh, interactive these 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 sessions are 
not one way process, right? These are two way process. Am I audible, Sanjay, sir? Yes, yeah, ma'am, you are audible. So I think uh, because I don't get any response, I was wondering whether I'm audible or not. No, 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 ma'am. You are clearly audible. I request participants, please be interactive. Okay, so anyway, I'll just uh, go about my way. So when we talk about compensatory, it is basically, as you can see in the uh, statements out here. Yeah. Yes? Did someone say something? No, ma'am, I think uh, from Ganesh, no, I think Mistakenly, he had unmuted himself. Okay. Okay. So, when we talk of compensatory, you will see that uh, this is if we are not getting proper care at home, we try to get it from the office. That is what is compensatory. And, and it is a, not a very good. Uh, why isn't my. Uh, My slide is not moving, so I don't know what's wrong with the slide. Oh, it is moving. We are getting them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now when we talk of compensatory, uh, we, are, we are observing golden mantra now in your slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when we talk of compensatory, it is basically that when we have low self esteem, right? We try to get it compensated from the other end. If the office people don't give me enough uh, priority, if the office people don't give me enough time or don't give me my status, I try to seek it at home. Or if my family don't take me uh, uh, seriously, they don't give me that kind of uh, weightage, I try to seek it in office. So this is what is a compensatory, what makes my office good for me or why my family is good for me. I try to balance both by trying to get, uh, uh, you know, trying to get, I can, you can say, value from people of the other side. The third point that I have discussed is alienation. Alienation is basically mentally detached. That means I have to do, I will only do that much I have to do. I will not do any extra. I'm paid a salary to teach. So if I'm walking on the, in the college premise and I find two boys fighting, I will not interfere because I'm not paid for it, right? So that type of behavior is basically... Uh, so that type of behavior is basically, you can say alienated behavior, where we are not bothered about anything but our the bare minimum work that we are expected to do. Next is instrumental. Instrumental is a good way to uh, you know de-stress, uh, a good way to balance work and life because we know that uh, this job is important to us. We are trying to uh, you know, uh, the job feel important to us because this is helping us get a salary. This is helping us buy uh, comforts. This is helping us buy education for children. So I want the job, so I do my job well. So if we have this kind of a perception, definitely we will do well. And it is a, uh, not, I wouldn't say it is a perfect way, but it definitely it is one of the ways to um, balance your work and life. The fourth is integrative. Integrative is a good way to uh, balance work and life, good way to remove the stress where, we take the help of others to cope up. I can take the help of my colleagues to cope up with my uh, family uh, difficulty. I can take help of my family members to cope up with offi official uh, deadlines. So integrative, we work together. The, the home and the office, they work together. They help each other. It is a good way, though not a perfect way, but a good way so that you at least you are not stressed out and you are a free person. And the last point that I talked about, segmentalist. 
the segmentalist two different chamber my office and my work uh, my office and my home they don't meet when i go to office no calls from home when i'm at home no calls from office when i'm home i will not work any official on documents when i'm in office i will not think of home so totally different. this is the best way to uh, lead your life but it doesn't happen so it doesn't it is not possible so what we do if the office i don't like if my boss i don't like if my environment of the office i don't like so i am stressed out i am feeling sick every morning i have, my heartbeat is high because i have to go back to that office there is a huge amount of stress so we have to adopt any one of these okay we can, we can uh, think from the instrumental point of view no i need the salary so i go so the moment i've made the office important to me because of the money that i get it is a de stressor i will feel better right so the uh, so you have to yourself choose what you can uh, uh, what coping style you can adopt and how much to uh, adopt it whether fully or partially or take two three styles and make it a one make it one style that depends on what you uh, actually uh, want or what how it depends from person to person it is not that everyone has to be the same okay so we have to prioritize humko kya karna hai what we have to do what is we cannot do everything all the time we cannot actually uh, have a, is the slide changing it is not changing in my screen okay so basically what i talked about are the uh, uh, the stress how to cope with the stress now we are all working people so in our daily routine in our daily work uh, we get lot of stress and we have to learn to cope with these stress okay so now we have to be what i'm talking to you about is we have to make the stress go away i have written one word two words rather be proactive now what is be proactive now to be proactive we have to take some actions and before we take some actions uh i have written three words out here <clears throat> it is stress you stress and de stress now what is this can any of you tell me what do you mean by you stress we have 55 54 other 53 participants can any of you tell me what do you mean by de stress and what do you mean by you stress hello yeah you uh, stress means i will take the all the whatever i have stress in, uh, included in uh, myself if i have any, any stresses i will leave it itself that is the de stress so whatever the problems i have i will increase the problem level that is means you stress increasing the stresses inside you mean to say you stress is when the stress becomes more that is you stress ha ah, yes yes uh and Mad what is de hello. stress hello madam yeah de stress is a good stress and de stress is the bad stress ha ah, yes uh, de stress is a bad stress no 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 i think, think again think again d means uh, it is uh, removing the kind of yes, stress yes, side yes, as yes. per ha uh -huh, yes. yes. you stress include the any problems again increase in no, the no, problem no, level no. or stress no, no, increase no, 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 no. somebody just oh, said oh. that you stress is there was another opinion that i just got okay oh, okay what was that Uh, there is a good stress yes Please. yes 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 so now we are the, the today's class is on stress and management of yes. stress right so okay. if you are okay. managing the stress then we have to make the stress change to you stress or ah. we have to de stress de stress yeah. okay okay so you, it is a medium level in between i think uh, yeah so uh, stress uh, yes yes please continue okay uh, 
uh, in between that is a uh, de stress is a zero level and a stress is a some problem you stress in between them no no i think that is no, a, no 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 that no, is the, a, the, no 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 uh, uh, the flow chart shows stress you stress no. de stress now so this, when this we stress. have the stress that means it is a negative thing stress is totally and totally a negative issue right so we convert the try we have to learn. it learn to convert the stress to u stress that means convert the stress that negative to positive so if there is no stress in our life do you really think we will work do you really think we will achieve something nothing man we will not do anything so yes. the stress that makes you behave positively because of stress a person learns and writes the exam if i tell you you know covid time people have got 90% marks you really yes. think they've got uh, they've studied they have not studied because there is no stress of examination right yes so yes. so so the no stress people have not studied when there is a little bit of stress and that little stress is making you work positively is making you study is making you earn something is making you go to office because that stress is a positive stress which is getting positive results from you so the stress is actually a good stress that is what is you stress but after all once that goodness from a stress is derived or it is you've got it you've achieved it right you have to de stress also that means you have to make your mind go blank that means no stress neither stress or you stress after the achievement of the goal you have to reach the uh, that mental state of de stress totally out of stress there is no stress so the two figures that we have one is a jumbled up wires in the mind totally stress huh? huge stress then we try to make it into uh, you can say a huge stress stress is there but it is a known area the stress is giving you positivity and after that is also done when you have achieved the positivity you have to de stress yourself so this is what um, uh, is, uh, i was talking to you the next point that i have written here is perceptual overhaul right that is basically your meaningful work now now i uh, we What stay in yes anybody said something okay we are uh, uh, now this is a uh, this bilai where uh, the uh, rungta college is situated we are staying in this city this is a steel township all of you know and uh, the and everyone most of the families here are somewhere either they themselves or uh, uh, you know there's some family member other now or earlier has been working in the steel plant so they decided to settle out here now i have done my research on uh, occupational stress i have done my phd in work uh, 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 involvement level work related with the steel plant only workers in the steel plant only so whenever i have spoken with the family members of every employee family members of every employee i have found that every first family member thought that their uh, father or mother whoever is working in the steel plant it can be anywhere it can be for a college teacher also it can be for a school teacher also you talk to the family member they they find they all of them say that their family member is actually leading a very you know in a is in a very key position irrespective of the seniority it can be at the junior most level or the senior most level is in a very key position very uh, specified uh, responsibility in a very responsible post very much liked by the others so this is what is the uh, i i found that people vision uh, about the family members who are working it is like that everyone had very very positive words to say about the responsibility of the person who went to work 
especially why I quoted steel plant because the working conditions inside the plant is extremely tough. People are working in furnaces, people are working in steel mel melting shops where the, uh, you know, the temperatures are um, extremely high, the uh, fires are always burning, people are in tough situations and the family members have such a wonderful opinion about the person who is doing those work. So this perception that the work done is very meaningful, the work done by them is very uh, important. This perception that people have make them go through that work in a very healthy manner. They are able to cope up in a very healthy manner because of the respect that they get from uh, others about themselves and they themselves feel that they are making a difference. They are important in their working area in their working zone. I would like to talk, ask all of you here, dear participants, that do, do you not feel that whatever you, uh, you do, uh, you, if you are not there, it won't have been so good. We all like to feel that. We all think that if I'm not here to do this, if had I not done this work, other person may not have done this so good. And this, if you don't think like that, you start thinking like that. Though we know that if you're not there, the world will run like that. There will be 20 more people waiting to take up my uh, place. But still, if we think the work that we are doing is meaningful, it's a perceptual overhaul. We just we change the perceptions. We make ourselves uh, important. We think of ourselves as important. We think of ourselves as meaningful people. Definitely, you will find this change that you consider this tough life as a very easy life because you are actuating. So when we have to change the stress into you stress or stress into de-stress, we have to change our thought process. We have to change our perceptions. We have to bring in the concept of meaning in whatever work we are doing to raise our self-esteem and this will in turn lower our uh, stress levels. Okay? Okay, now let's come to the next. Uh... Now why isn't it? Okay, then another point is imagery visualization. Now this imagery and visualization, I have used a lot in my therapeutic uh, usage of yoga. So I have done many researches in yoga, I've written many papers, written chapters in related with yoga. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, all members out here, that it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with religion. Yoga is uh, for me is a daily routine. It is like we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. It is some a part of it. And I have used it in my lot of care also, a lot of therapy also. And I found that it definitely de-stresses. I'll come to the proper yoga later. So, but now I'm talking about imagery and visualization. You know, I have done a research, uh, a study, on um, traumatized children, children who are in college, the college that I'm teaching and the other nearby colleges also, because if this was a study, which a report I have presented in many conferences and uh, in India and abroad also. And I found that these traumatized children who, are, who had troubled childhood, you know, so they had this, uh, 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 now they're happy. They're in college, they're in hostel, but the troubles that they have faced really makes uh, some problems in their daily behavior. So after some psychometric tests, we uh, found out, uh, we actually, uh, you know, empirically the uh, uh, children with some troubled childhood was segregated. And the two uh, groups, the control and the experimental, the two groups were 
uh, worked upon with uh, yoga and exercises where imagery and visualization was used. So imagery and visualization is you are made to buy some, uh, it is something like psychoanalysis. You are made uh, to visualize a beautiful world. You are made to visualize that the pain that was there is slowly seeping away. You are made to visualize uh, a nice sunset. You are made to visualize that once you are in that sunset, the earlier pain is going. So it is a the voice modulation of the yoga practitioner. Uh, you know that is uh, a huge, uh, you can say, source of cure. And after uh, a few weeks, when the again the retests were done, little uh, positive results surfaced which proved that imagery and visualization definitely is, uh, is a, uh, you can say, a tool to de-stress, to remove the stress. Now, what is it? We are always thinking negatively. We are thinking of negative issues. Why can't we think of stuff that gives us happiness? So the, here we are, you know, we are guiding ourselves. We are forcing ourselves to introspect of the beautiful times as compared to the not so beautiful times. And this guided uh, uh, tour, you do it once, you do it twice, you do it, it becomes a habit with you, conditioned process with you. And slowly and slowly, when you are into a positive world as compared to a negative world, that positivity stays with you. I know it is very easy to say as to uh, do actually, but then, Try and see, because when we talk of uh, these mind exercises, when we talk of meditations, you have to be calm and quiet. You have to take your mind to those areas which are very, very positive and beautiful. Stay there, force yourself to be there for two, three, four days, one, two, three, four weeks. And after some time you will think, you will find that very easily you reach that stage, very easily you reach that point. So you have to visualize the positivity that are there in your life, not the uh, negativity. You have to visualize what the coming future holds for you. We have to sit and daydream. Till you sit and daydream, till you sit and visualize, till you sit and think of the positivity, how will you set your goals? When we do this exercise of goal setting, we set our goals from the domain that we have to, that, that is within our reach. And if the domain within our reach, mentally within our reach, if you think of it, it will show us the pathways also to reach those areas. So the goal setting behavior is only possible, good goal setting behavior, positive goal setting behavior is only possible when we know the way to reach it. And this will only happen with visualization, with introspection and imagery, images form in our mind. Suppose I have to think myself as a big academician, as a renowned academician, as a world globally acknowledged academician, then I have to think also how to reach it. I have to think myself as chairing big symposia, international conferences, I have to think big as to traveling to exotic places, being on those chair, I have to think. When I think, then only the roads to reach that place will also surface and we will know how to actually set our positive goals. So this is one point that, uh, that is very, very creative that I would say is very, very, uh, you know, push it, it pushes you in the direction of positivity. Next point is what we are talking about now, we are talking about how to de-stress, how to remove stress. So I will not go much into uh, yoga or breathing exercise or music or dance because I know the, all of us know that all these things definitely give a lot of positivity and a lot of de-stress uh, uh, to our mind. So as far as the breathing exercises go, you all know it is good, but why is it good? I'm sure all of you know, 
because basically this deep breathing i've written some points out here it increases the supply of oxygen to your brain stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system which promotes a state of calmness i will just explain some points to you in a very layman's language second point that i've written is breathing exercises will help strengthen the cardiovascular muscles and improve bl blood pressure regular deep breathing also decreases the chance of a future stroke <clears throat> now our life is full of stress right so when we are under stress have you ever noticed what kind of breath we take in we will be taking short breaths huh? it will be it will come fast and when we take this short breath the flow of oxygen inside is very limited and the flow of uh, of air outside it takes it is also limited because we have taken in less air so now when we do deep breathing we have taken in a huge supply of oxygen so our brain which was getting this much food now is getting this much food and when it gets the big number of food it is swimming the brain is swimming in lot of oxygen it is getting lot of food lot of balanced diet lot of uh, would say dry fruits and fresh fruits everything that is needed for a good health it is being supplied by the deep breath that you are taken and this oxygen stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system now in our nervous system we have the two nervous system the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system copes up during stress it gives us extra energy during stress if there's a bear chasing me i run and when i run i run much faster than my normal routine then when then what time to pull off i run much faster so when i run so fast from where did i get the extra energy so this extra energy to run fast because someone is some animal is chasing me this extra energy is provided by the sympathetic nerves and after giving this extra energy it gets depleted energy is finished and we just fall down uh there is no strength in our body so when we take in this deep breath the parasympathetic nerves is what makes us calm down what makes us take into a state of calmness the supply of extra energy that took away all the energy resources from our body and tired uh, made us a tired human being it is the parasympathetic nerves that again rejuvenates us that again makes us live that again makes us alive again makes us fresh and how does this parasymp parasympathetic nerves make us uh, alive when we take in long breaths of oxygen inside and since in our life we are always into stress and tension we are always doing so much extra work we are always overloaded with work whether at home or uh, at work there's so much of deadlines we are taking in short breaths and we are always running so who calms us who gives us the uh, you know gives us our energy back which has been taken away by the sympathetic nerves it is the parasympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves only work with oxygen lot of oxygen your brain starts getting stimulated and you get back your energy the second point that here if we say that when we do this breathing exercises it strengthens our heart muscles the cardiovascular muscle but naturally you're stressing it you're making it you're pumping it Uh, so it is it, the muscles are exercising it is not the only the oxygen that the lungs that are exercising it is the heart muscles also that are exercising it improves your blood pressure really it when this whole heart pumping system and the lungs the blood pumping system the whole circulation system if it is healthy you are a healthy person
the blockages that you have will not be there the flow of the blood will be uh, free there won't be any blockages definitely chance of a stroke will also get reduced and eliminated so this is how the breathing helps us to stay uh, fit and de stress here i am only talking about stress and de stress and and when there is stress short supply of oxygen is there so to de stress we have to take in long supply of or uh, lengthy supply of oxygen the next point is practice mindfulness now when we talk of mindfulness this is a very latest concept you know um, you will find these um, uh, conferences on mindfulness happening you will find this um, you know big big therapies on mindfulness you will have these uh, health centers uh, the psych uh, the psychological services who are making their clients practice mindfulness i think mindfulness is something very very in very very simple terms we should make our conscious mind mind which is conscious which is awake which is aware uh, focus into whatever we are doing now we are multitasking all the time i am teaching here i'm sitting here on my uh, in my office i'm talking to you people but somewhere i may be thinking okay at 2 to 30 whenever i finish with this class what i have to do so my mind gets diverted i have, may have to think of something else what i'll do in the evening again the mind gets diverted so what i'm saying to you there may be some slip of tongue similarly when you are doing some work at home somebody calls you you take the phone you talk to that person somebody rings the bell you go and open the door somebody asks for water you give the water so many work you are doing at a time so you are not putting your concentration on one particular thing at a time you are doing 200 things at a time so when you are practicing mindfulness it's a simple exercise if you forget where you keep your spectacles every 2 uh, 3 hours chashma kaha gaya chashma kaha gaya you are hunting Ah, uh, where's the car key you are hunting? Where's the mobile you are hunting? And if the mobile is in a uh, muted tone, even if you ring from some other phone, it is not ringing. Again, you are hunting. So these are the things, small, small things that gives us stress. Ten minutes, if you don't get your car key, you are you know at a threshold of getting late. Ten minutes, your mobile is not there. You are at a threshold of losing some deadline. so every minute is accountable for so mindfulness means paying full attention to something so you have to it's a habit which we have not cultivated it's a habit which we have not done it consciously because we have not taken it seriously but once because the, our mind uh, is even our body for that matter uh you know it can be molded you can just learn something you can just by learning you condition your mind it ha takes ha it takes a uh, you know, time but once it takes time and it is learned it happens on its own so every time you spear you keep your uh, chashma somewhere you keep your specs somewhere you have to see i have kept it here every time you keep your mobile you have to tell yourself i have kept it here every time you, you have to write it down on a paper and keep it in front of you so that you remember you have to practice mindfulness if you start practice mindfulness uh, you know making short notes to be done deadlines on a paper and keep it in front of you you will see 80% of your stress is reduced because we forget when we remember one thing we forget the other thing what is stopping you from writing and put it there putting it there we have to put our mind
Ma'am, are you getting my voice? Ma'am, you are you are muted yourself. Please. Kindly unmute yourself, ma'am. There is option at left bottom. Yeah. I think there there was an issue with yeah. you on your side. Yeah. Now now is it okay? Yeah. Okay, ma'am. One minute, ma'am. Ha. You can share now. Now is the uh... again you have to go the uh, same way. Share screen, ma'am. Uh, I think your uh, Zoom is in full screen. Just double click at the top. No, I think uh, even if my uh, presentation doesn't come, that's fine. If you can hear me, is my video coming? Yeah, video also. We are getting your video now. So the the uh, presentation is not coming, right? Yeah. Ha, Mr. Sanjay, the presentation is not coming, right? No, ma'am. Presentation we can't see. Doesn't matter. I just have two or three more uh, slides. I can just talk like that. Okay, ma'am. If that is okay with you people. Yeah, obviously. Okay. So I was just talking about practice mindfulness. That will uh, lead to a state of free mind. Lead to a state where there is. uh no stress and it will make you remember a lot of things that you normally forget in the chaos and and you will find that the life is more organized keep a pen keep a diary keep a paper on the study table or on the table where you sit the most it can be your dining table it can be your office table and please make notes of things to be done with the deadlines and with the dates keep looking at it you will see that you remember everything the chaos will take care of it then the last point that i want to discuss today is a uh, is an area that is very very yes did somebody say something No, ma'am. That was a mistake and unmuted someone. Now it's okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. So uh, the last one that I want to talk to you is an area which is very, very close to my heart. Now this area is basically called the area of positive psychology, and I'm sure all of you must have uh, heard that uh, about this thing. That this is something which is. very uh, i think last 15 10 years this concept has you know it has taken roots and it has grown and um, the whole concept of positive psychology is going from stress to a state of no stress now every human being has some uh, positivity and some negativity so when we talk of the positivity we are actually doing what is uh just one minute i'm not able to see the screen uh, so ma'am i don't know something some other pop ups have come and i'm not no, able, no, but can you see me no no that's yeah uh, we are able to see that pop ups comes just because uh, some participants have written some questions in the chat room for you ma'am if i read, okay i'll take shall I, i'll take it up at the end okay no ma'am yeah uh, yeah i'll just finish i'll up. just finish and take up the questions okay ma'am okay and uh, okay 
so when it comes to positivity i'll just uh, uh, positive psychology i'll just explain to you the concept now um, uh, we are psychologists right people come to us to say like suppose a uh, mother comes with a child and says that my child has a problem um, uh, he is not able to write very fast so this was a case that came to me many years back the child was not able to write uh, properly a grown up child and not very fast so what happened class 6 7 the child was in and whenever there was exam he could hardly finish one question or two question and uh, after that he he would just couldn't write by the time the time was over so after a few tests and all it was found the child had some dyslexia he was a dyslexic child he wrote some words uh, ulta or he took some more time than normal person but then we found that the child was very very good in the field of computer much more above the standard of what his peers were uh, other students of the class were he was far better so the um, uh, we tried to guide the mother in such a manner that okay uh, can you get permission from the school so that the child uh, can type out his answers in a computer because definitely there was a psychological issue with the child the school initially uh, they agreed but then they said the other students won't like they did not agree the parents were so uh, i would say aware that when they found that the child academically could not cope up or may not cope up because he had some problem and after a lot of counseling therapies and other uh, targeted intervention also he could not actually uh, you know uh, actually uh, go up to the standard of the other classmates from class 8 they just made the child uh, get away from the proper school made the child go into the uh, zone of computer into designing into web designing etc etc in which he was exceptionally good made the child do some uh, do the basic certificates of class 10 12 from some open school where the uh, it was not so tough where he could manage to get his school uh, pa- school passing certificates but eventually the child was uh, once he was a grown up young man he was doing so well that he was picked up by one of the big uh, tech companies like google and microsoft that that level company as one of the lead web designers so see the importance of targeting the positivity in a person the positive qualities in a person negating the negative aspects in a person and developing the positivity had the parent sat there and beaten the child up forced him to go to a normal school forced him to learn and write and the child getting 30% marks 20% marks 40% and not passing in one class for more than one year total mental wreck he would have been the family environment would have ruined the family would have been broken discord would have been there among the spouses blaming blame game would have happened well so beautifully they tackled it they made the child take the courses in which he was very good and then no stopping from him for the for the child after that he just rose and rose and rose and he excelled but you give him a paper and pen he is not able to do that well as he can do with the keyboard and the computer so this is what is the uh, what i want to target about positive psychology positive psychology is basically that you look at the future than the past in normal when we talk of we talk of therapy we talk of healing in psychology we talk of removing anxiety in psychology we talk of removing stress in psychology we take therapies we, uh, but in psychoanalysis what we do we dig up the past we dig up the incidences of the past and then we try to find out what had happened 
this is what is the uh, you can say the the conventional psychology or uh, the traditional psychology but positive psychology is totally dynamic it says let the past be there let the negativity be there don't try to dig it out and bring out on, on the surface and then remove it let it be there just increase the positivity so that the positivity overpowers the negativity this is the beautiful concept of um, of positive psychology and this one example the this dyslexic child's example that i gave you can you imagine the stress that would have happened that would have overpowered the entire family ruined relationships ruined the environment ruined the life of the other child who was there because of comparisons look he is good he is not good uh, huh? and the entire environment would have been a poison in environment but one step targeting the positive aspect of the child it it actually cleared the environment it actually brought in so much of uh, uh, de stress by removing all the stress this is one this is what is positive psychology this is what we have to learn to practice to see the good things to see the positive things develop the positive things not to pay attention to the negative thing another uh, example is sport it is all over in uh, in the internet and the whatsapp messages the the uh, stories that come which i like and i'm sure you also must have uh, heard about it somewhere or read about it somewhere is a story of surgeon. so one uh, heart surgeon he took his car to a garage and the check up and this garage uh, person the mechanic and he they are known to each other because he has been visiting this garage very very regularly for the past many years and but naturally he is a uh, surgeon he is a heart surgeon he is a he is a cardiac surgeon he is doing very well he is earning a huge amount of money and uh, the, as compared to the uh, mechanic so the mechanic always sees the surgeon and he says Oof, had i been in his place look but see how poor i am see how big he is and he always saw the negativity in his life so one day he just he just couldn't take it when the doctor came to his shop and uh, 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 so the mechanic tells the doctor 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 i have been wondering that what both of us do is same Uh, but then you get so much more paid so much more money so much more respect than me why is it so he said what do you mean that both of us do the same so the mechanic explains to the doctor and he says see i also do the same i have opened your bonnet right i uh, uh, i have i have i'm checking out the parts i will remove the wrong part i will put the right part back why don't we do the same thing you also do the same thing you open up the heart you bring out the wrong part you put in the a good part and you mend you heal you try to you know make it better we both do the same thing but see you get paid so much and i get paid so less so the doctor just smiled and the doctor says man you also try it what you do with the car engine running you put your hands in then see if you can do it but you you switch it off and then you do the repairs i cannot do it there is the difference so what i'm trying to tell you dear participants here that you have to see the positivity in whatever you get the grass is always greener on the other side and this gives you us a lot of stress what we don't have gives us a lot of stress as compared to what gives us uh what we have right so these are all changes in the perceptions we have to forcefully make ourselves follow step so that after a certain point of time it becomes a part of us and i will just uh, finish uh, today's uh, presentation with a, another uh, small uh, story the story i'm and this story is of positive 
attitude and how the same situation but the differences in the attitude brings in stress and the same situation and a different attitude brings in happiness so uh, uh, again a very very common story is a story of uh, two salesmen who was uh, sent to africa by their um, company and these salesmen they sold shoes so the company made shoes so the company asked them that uh, you go to uh, africa you go to the uh, western part you go to the eastern part one went to the eastern part one went to the western part and see what is the state of opening showrooms there what is the uh, feasibility of uh, marketing shoes out there what is the need of people out there and give us report so that we open a factory in those areas we open our outlets in those areas and we expand our business so the first salesman went to the eastern area of uh, africa the second salesman went to the western area of africa so they both went and both of them saw that people were not wearing shoes they were not wearing they, they had they didn't want to wear shoes they were not wearing shoes and both of them came back and reported the same thing to the manager one said their people don't wear shoes there is no market for shoes the other came and said people are not wearing shoes there is a huge market for selling shoes we just have to change their perceptions show them the importance of shoes show them the uh, how they can be hygienically healthy by wearing shoes and we can actually advertise and there's a huge huge potential sales there because there are no market there are no shops there are no factories make and sell shoes now let's come back to the office one person comes and reports people don't wear shoes there is no market other says there is a huge market because people don't wear shoes sentence is common people don't wear shoes he also said people don't wear shoes he also said but one said no market other said huge market see positive attitude now comes the report of their promotion who gets the promotion for whom will the work go ahead for whom will the there will be a foreign posting for whom there will be a raise of salary for whom there will be less stress because he is actually now will be in a position recognized for his job recognized for his input this is how we bring in stress or we don't bring bring in stress it is our outlook it is what we think it is how we present it is what we visualize that actually makes us see the potential not see the potential where there is potential there is less stress where there is not put no potential there is more stress what we are what is our perceptions that is what is stress for us or no stress for us so dear participants with this i want to end that our happiness is also with us our stress is also in our way of thinking we have to change our perceptions into positivity into positive psychology into positive outlook and not pay attention to the negativity of our lives we cannot remove the negativity but we have to see the positivity we have to target the positivity so with this i would like to end my presentation and now let us take up the questions that are there i, I think there are six chats that i see
There's a beautiful term, uh, Mr. Anand, N. Anand, I can see the name here, uh, which, which is called the psychosomatic. Now, this word is very, very important in our life because everything that we do is psychosomatic. We feel happiness, it is psychosomatic. We are stressed out, it is psychosomatic. We, the diseases that we have may be psychosomatic. Now, what is psychosomatic? Psychosomatic is the connection between the mind and the body. It is the connection between the mind and the body and the influence that one has on the other. So as I said, if I'm stressed out in my workplace, suppose I have a test with a colleague or my uh, uh, superior here, the senior here calls me and tells me something which I don't like. What will I do? I will be all stressed up. There will be a lot of uh, you know, wrong energy in me, a lot of negativity in me. I go back home. I go back home and this stress, I try to de-stress. And how I de-stress? I there, here in my workplace, I cannot be the Lord. I cannot be the senior most. I'm just in a department, right? But when I go home, I'm the boss. So what I do, whoever I can boss over, I try to show my bossism. I will shout at my children. I will shout at the working people who are working for me. I may, not, I may not behave properly with the gardener. I may, may not behave properly with the milkman who comes because I am the person who has the key there. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to de-stress by making the environment at home also poisonous. Here, I, and by doing that, I may be mentally free, but the family members and the surroundings of my family is not free. But if I'm not able to de-stress like that, which is again a negative way of de-stressing, what is happening? The stress that I have in my mind, I'm not able to eat after that. My, uh, I'm always angry, I'm uh, sweating, right? My heart is beating high. So what is happening? It is affecting my body. So the, it, though the stress was mental, it is affecting the body. And the, the lifestyle diseases that we have, why do we call it lifestyle? Sugar, thyroid, BP, heart attacks, all these things are lifestyle diseases. They're all affected by your uh, mind. And mind is affected by stress. So Mr. Anand, definitely stress affects the mind as well as the body. And the term psychosomatic is very, very relevant when that happens. Okay, so... Uh, another question has come from uh, Mr. Anand is, uh, in today's society, we are expected to compete everywhere, definitely, and prove to be successful. What is your view about handling success and failure? Now, we are talking about success and failure. Now, this is exactly like you have to balance work and life. There are coping styles. Now, when we talk of success, it is a euphoria. It is all in the mind. What is success? Is there a yardstick of success? Now, when I joined as a, a young professor in this college 30 years back, I was the assistant professor. That time, I must have thought that when I become the associate professor, my goal is achieved. Or when I become the HOD, my goal is achieved. Or when I become the principal, my goal is achieved. Principal, when I become the director, my goal is achieved. Is there any yardstick of a success? No. Success never comes. Because when the moment you reach the success, you want the next uh, read of the ladder. So success is always a need that you have in yourself, which is not fulfilled, which is always there. It is an unquenching thirst. And failure is again, I would say, it is your perception that you think that you have failed. Why have you failed? You have to find the reason first. 
were you not good enough if you are not good enough definitely you uh, try to you know tell yourself okay i did not deserve it but if you would if you deserve it and somebody got it because of some push and pull if it is a job then you tell yourself i deserve it but then somebody used a um, you know unfair means so i again i try to calm myself by saying man man ka apna acha kya hai i have put in my best i did not get it so what here is whenever there is success you are not satisfied you want more whenever there is failure we try to help our mind to justify why we feel and the reasons that surface it is defense mechanisms that we try to defend our mind uh, uh and we try to find solutions as to why we did not succeed or why we failed so the it is all working of our mind but we have to when we fail we have to think of what we got instead what was the positivity in that failure also that will to healthy there are ways of coping up and finding positivity is also a way of coping up which i'm sure all of us we do that all of us do that okay ma'am uh, there is one more question yeah समटाइम uh, ऐसा होता है कि जैसे पर्सन को छोटी छोटी uh, कोई भी सिचुएशन uh, ऐसी आती है एंड ही गोट स्ट्रेस्ड सो हाउ वी ओवरकम दैट टाइप ऑफ सिचुएशन देखो आई आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू दैट एनी स्ट्रेसफुल कंडीशन दैट कम्स छोटी छोटी बातें जो होती हैं हमारी लाइफ में हम उनको कोप अप करने के लिए हमारा जो माइंड है जैसे हमारा कंट्री को uh, बचाता बाहरी uh, तत्व से कौन है हमारा Defense services, right? Similarly, yes. our mind ko, ham ko bhi, ah, uh, save kon karta? It is the defense mechanisms, which is the in inbuilt mechanism in our mind process that helps us to de-stress. Jo our daily routine ka, just a choti si baat hai. Suppose we go in for an interview and I fail the interview. It may be with all of us, we may have faced such a thing. and it is a failure so it will answer both the question of mr anand and uh, I, i don't know who asked this question right now uh, so anyway so it will answer both your queries now this defense mechanisms makes us happy by finding a reason of why we fail suppose when we don't get into a job that i thought i would get like i said he uh, that वो मेरे लायक ही नहीं था आई आई वॉज नॉट आई वॉज टू गुड फॉर दैट जॉब विच इज दिपिकल केस ऑफ डिफेंस मैकेजम द प्रोवर्ब एज यू नो इज ग्रेप्स आर सावर अंगूर खट्टे हैं वेन आई एम एंग्री इन कॉलेज आई गो होम एंड आई एम रियली बिहेव बैडली विद द अदर्स that is again a uh, defense mechanisms which is called transference i'm transferring the stress of college there and then i feel that at last i have been able to do something which i cannot do here it is my mode of coping up it is my method of uh, coping up and that is what is how i cope up with the stress then again another thing is when i was in say class 10 i wanted to be a doctor i studied i took a biology i studied 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 i in my 12th i wrote my 12th exam i wrote my entrance for mbbs i could not qualify it is not my story though but just a example to quote so uh, it was a stress which was there daily routine stress we all feel it when our children fail or when we fail so this stress we just suppress and repress in our unconscious mind but then how do we cope up when i have my own child since class 6 i keep pushing my child look you have to be a doctor you have to be a doctor you have to be a doctor and i badger him to become a doctor he may not want to do but he does it because i have not left any avenues other avenues open for him how did i cope up with this stress this is also a mechanism a defense mechanism coping with stress which is called transference i'm transferring that stress 
that I felt 30 years back to making my child into a doctor. And the, I uh, reliving my dreams that was not fulfilled then, now. I'm de-stressing now the stress that I felt 30 years back by again doing what I couldn't do, making my child do what I could not do. It is another way of de-stressing, right? So there are many ways of de-stressing. We don't even realize it, but unconsciously our mind has a defense mechanisms that help us remove the stress by opting for any of the uh, many methods of uh, de-stressing through defense mechanisms. Okay, anything else? No, ma'am. There are a few more questions. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see somebody has written nice examples of positivity. Tejaswini, you have written, Madam, even we are telling the right things to people, friends, they are not listening to us, but then they prove ourselves wrong. If continuously uh, happening uh, like you are always wrong, it is very too. It is not very clear, Tejaswini, what you have uh, written. If you can talk about it, it would be better than what you have written. Now, Harsha, Mr. Harsha has written, what can we do to cope up with stress when somebody is intentionally harassing? Now, as I said, stress is like a barrier, right? Either you remove the barrier or you change your road. Now, who is the stressor? Suppose the stressor is your, who, your family member. You cannot change it. If it is your boss, you may not have the avenue of changing it. So there is, again, you know, you are in a tough situation, definitely, but then, I think no stress situation, no situation can, uh, you know, uh, any stress situation, I should say, can be made into a better situation by dialogue. Why don't you try it? Uh, that, what do you, uh, like, if you just talk to someone, you know, I always say non communicado, non communication is a huge stressor. I don't like you, I, I work with you, I don't like you. So I don't talk to you. So much of stress I'm feeling just to see you, right? Continuous harassment. But why can't I talk to you? I know I don't like you, but then I have, if I either I just remove myself from the situation, I take up another job and go. I cannot leave my family and go, but I can always change my job. But that is not so easily done, right? So we have to sit and talk out ourselves. I have done it. I have done it in my department. There has been, there have been a few times when there were some discord. Then I have talked out. I said, listen, I come to this work every day. You also come here every day. Do we want a situation where we are uncomfortable? Do we want to be unhappy in the same office every day? No. So let's both of us mend our ways. You have to deal with it yourself. You have to find your own avenues and I'm sure there are, but please open dialogue. You talk, talk it out. You will find ways. Uh, what, uh, there's a last question that I think I will take. What is the role of sports on stress? Definitely, Mr. Anand, you have asked it. Now, role of sports. Any sports will give you extra energy. Your adrenal will flow. It is like deep breathing. It is like supplying oxygen. You are running. You are taking short breaths. Then after some time, you are taking long breaths. You will sit and you will take long breaths. When you're taking short breaths, you are giving less oxygen. Your, uh, uh, I would say your uh, sympathetic nerves are working. But the moment you sit, you cannot run for 200 uh, hours, right? You can only run for 20 minutes. So when you stop, you take in long breaths. 
that is when you are again making your heart healthier so this exercise that you are doing whether it is uh, any kind of sport it is a field sport or a board game whatever you are doing your heart is palpitating high low high low oxygen is going because of anxiety high low high low that means your all your muscles are being worked you know it is working over time definitely you are making your heart lungs everything become healthier so if these are healthy brain is getting lot of oxygen you automatic de stress will be there you cannot be stressed out while you are playing even if you are having stress when you are at your games the you leave the stress ahead uh, or behind you so for that particular time you are de stressed you are rejuvenated so you again go back and tackle the stress in a very very positive way and these are all you know you cannot be de stressed all the time these are cycles that keep coming and going you know you will be happy you will be sad happy sad it will continuously go on like that ah uh, so any more questions shall we uh, put a full stop with that mr sanjay ah uh, very uh, thank you ma'am i i think uh, no questions but uh, a huge compliments for you for the fantastic explanation from last four days you were busy in technical talks various uh, research works but today we are quite uh, relieved of our stress obviously you are uh, expert of about with uh, uh, definitely we need a, a person who uh, knows well in psychology uh, always we need a friend psychiatrist and a person like uh, to do uh, relieve our stress you have a special lecture on stress management they really help us in our technical field in our daily life in our society also i very much thankful to you ma'am from on behalf of our mechanical department indian engineering college and technology thank you very much ma'am you have spared your time with us thank you thank you very much ma'am thank you so much wonderful session even for me too thank you thank you ma'am